The first question is from the Alida platform, from Mukti Das. He's a farmer from Murshidabad, India. Dear sir, I am a Hindu. I am ready to accept Islam if you answer this question of mine. My question is regarding future prediction in the Quran. Number one, when Twin Tower 9-11 will be destroyed, the time was mentioned, the date, month and the year. This is mentioned in Surah Tawbah, verse number 109 and 110. The date is Surah Tawbah 9, month is Jews number 11 of Surah Tawbah and the year is total words from starting Surah Tawbah to Ayah number 108. Second, when man first landed on the moon, this is mentioned in Surah Al-Qamar. We know that man landed in the moon in 1969 and the Arabic date is 1389 Hijri. From Surah Nas to Qamar, total verse is 1389. And the numerical value of the first verse of Surah Qamar is 1389. What is your opinion for this? Mukti Das asked the question regarding that if I answer this question, he would love to accept Islam and is interested in the future prediction of the Quran. And he says that he came to know that it was mentioned in the Quran regarding the time and the date of the 9 11, that the twin tower bombing. And he says that this is mentioned in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 10. And Surah Tawbah is chapter number 9. So it is 9, and it is Jews 11 of the Quran. So it is 11, 9 11, that is September 11th. And if you count the total number of uh, words coming from the starting of Surah Tawbah to verse 108, it comes to the year. And he gives a similar example that it was said in the Quran in Surah Qamar that the date of man landing on the moon, it is 1969, and Hijri is 1389. So if you count, the number of words from Surah Naf to Surah Kamar, it is 1389, which is Hijriya. So what are my comments? As far as both these examples are concerned, there is no tafsir of the Quran or classical tafsir which ever speaks about these things. This is just according to me a concoction that some Muslim may have tried to show some prediction and he tried to match and he came up with the theory that this destruction is mentioned in Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse 109. And if you read Surah Tawbah chapter number 9 verse 109, it says that which would you prefer? Which is better of the two? Laying your foundation on the piety to Allah and his pleasure or laying the foundation on the sand cliffs which breaks down to pieces and it will surely break down to pieces and it will be in hell. So based on this, when the verse talks about breaking down to pieces, someone came up uh, with the hypothesis that, you know, the destruction of the Twin Tower and this is predicted in the Quran. This is totally wrong because if you read the Two verses before of Surah Tawbah chapter number 9, verse number 107, it says that if the foundation is laid on fitna, talking about, about the munafiks who make a mosque, if the foundation of the mosque is based on fitna creating among the believer, it's not good. And the next verse speaks about the best is foundation on taqwa. If you keep, if you build the foundation of the mosque on taqwa, and you'll find that this is the mosque that you should pray in. And then was the 109 says that which is better of the two to lay a foundation on the piety to Allah or seeking his pleasure or making a foundation on the sand cliffs and it breaks down to pieces and it continues saying the sand cliff breaks down to pieces and it will be in the fire of hell. So this is talking about that, that if the mosque is made by monafics or made with the intention to disunite the believers, then this mosque is not correct. And talks about the incidents 
how the Munafik had made a mosque during the time of the Prophet. And then it goes to the next world that the mosque, the main foundation should be on Taqwa and people will pray more on it. And then it talks about verse 109 that the best is that a foundation should be on the piety of Allah, seeking his pleasure, not on foundation, on sand hills which will break down to pieces. No Tafsi talks about 9-11 is going to happen. So there are some Muslim who out of enthusiasm try and match and think which is totally wrong. We should not go into this type of hypothesis. If this is true, then the few verses before that, it talks about uh, having a war uh, with the pagans of Makkah. Is the date matching? That's also the Tawbah, that is nine. And that also is Jews Levit. And how come the Quran which follows the lunar calendar is giving the date of the solar calendar? So these are just hypotheses and this is not what uh, should be followed. What we should follow is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and the classical tafsir of the Quran. These are just hypotheses made by some Muslim to try and prove that these are miracles of the Quran. This does more harm to the spread of Islam than good. And even the second about that man landed on the moon in 1969, the Hijri was 1389 and if you count the number of words it is the same these are this hypothesis which doesn't carry any weight you can if you agree with this set of calculation yes one may match but there will be 99 which do not match what about the other verses of the Quran talking about other events did it happen on the 9th level no it didn't happen so if someone wants to argue if you use this logic to the other verses of the Quran on the events it will not show any date but really Brother, my brother Mukti Das, who really want to know about the future prediction, there are many. And I've given a talk on is the Quran God's word. We speak about this in detail. There are various predictions. For example, if you read Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 1, verse number 1 to verse number 6, it talks about Alif La Meem. Romans, they will be defeated in a nearby land and after they're defeated they'll be victorious after a few years and the believers will rejoice and when this verse was revealed the Persians they had defeated the Byzantine Empire of the Romans and the Mushrikeen of Makkah they were very happy because the Romans they were believer in God and now the fire worshippers the Persians, they come and defeat the Romans. So the Mushrikeen of Makkah was very happy. They were very happy. And the believers, the Mumin, the Muslims, they were sad. So the verse was revealed that the Romans have been defeated in a nearby land. And the verse continues. They, defeat, they are defeated, but they'll be victorious in a few years. And in Arabic, it means less than 10 years, a few years. And we know that the Persians, they defeated the Byzantine Empire in 615 CE. But within next nine years, who would think that the Roman Empire, which was defeated, they, in the span of nine years, they defeat the Persians again in 624 CE. So this was a prophecy. And this prophecy, this prediction, was revealed when the Romans were defeated and the Quran was there. And while the Quran was being revealed, while the Prophet was there, this prediction comes true. So these are things which are historical facts, which can be verified, and the Quran is very clear cut on this. And there are various such predictions. For example, if you read Surah Fatah, chapter number 48, verse number 29, it says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfills the vision, the dream of the messenger. Talking about the dream, the vision of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And the messenger will enter with security and safety the sacred mosque that's Makkah with his head shaved and his hair cut short and without any fear you don't know but Allah knows so Allah is predicting that the vision and the dream of Prophet Muhammad that he will go back to Makkah will be fulfilled he'll enter Makkah the sacred mosque with safety with security with his head shave that is performing the Umrah of the Hajj and with his haircut 
and without any fear. And we know that later on, towards the, towards the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ, we know about the Fatih Makkah, that the Prophet went, mashallah, and that was a bloodless victory, alhamdulillah. This is a future prediction. Similarly, the Quran speaks in Surah Nasr, that is chapter number 110, where Allah says, Iza jaa nasrullahi wal fatah. That when comes the help of Allah, there will be victory. And you will find large number of people of other religions entering the fold of Islam in large crowds. So, praise the Lord and ask for forgiveness for he is often of returning. So this again is a prediction that large number of people will enter into Islam and the Prophet, mashallah, goes back to Makkah and you find that many people accept Islam. They were, when he gave the favorite pilgrimage, the 124,000 sahabas, alhamdulillah. This is a prediction. Further, if you read Surah Lahab, that is chapter number 111, which says, talking about Abu Lahab, that is the father of the flame. And we know that Abu Lahab was one of the staunchest enemy of the Prophet. And whenever the Prophet spoke to anyone, the moment the Prophet went away, he used to go to the person and say, what did the Prophet say? Black, it is white. Did the Prophet say day? It is night. He used to speak exactly opposite of what the Prophet used to say. And he used to lie very often. Here this verse and this surah is revealed. In this surah, it says that indicates that Abu Lahab will never accept Islam and he will die in the hellfire. And after this verse was revealed, Abu Lahab lived for several years. If he said so much of lie against the Prophet, he could have lied one more time to prove the Quran wrong. He could have said, I'm a Muslim. Not that he had to believe. Even if he told a lie that you are the Muslim, the Quran has been proved wrong. So imagine the author of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is telling that Abu Lahab will never accept Islam. A person who was the staunchest enemy, who was a liar, only thing he had to do was lie once more, and the Quran would have been proved wrong. Only thing he had to do was say that I'm a Muslim, not that he had to pray, not that he had to behave like one, only you could have said, I am a Muslim and the Quran would have been proved wrong. But he never did it. And we know that he died and we know that Allah put him in the hellfire. So this is a prediction. There are very such predictions. So if you really want to know about the future predictions in the Quran, I would request you to see, watch my video cassette on the topic, Is the Quran God's Word? The talk is for approximately one and a half uh, to one hour 45 minutes for the question and session, both put together about three and a half hours. And I've said that the glorious Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which was revealed to the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And the Quran, to prove itself the word of God, any book, to prove that it is the word of God, it should pass the test of time. Previously was the age of miracles and the Quran is the miracle of miracles. Then came the age of literature and poetry. And you know that Arab, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, they acclaim the glorious Quran to, the best, to be the best Arabic literature available on the face of the earth. But today is not the age of literature and poetry. Suppose a book in a very poetic fashion says the world is flat. Will a modern man believe today? And the answer is no. Because today is the age of science and technology. So if you put the Quran to the test of science and technology, you will come to know that the Quran has more than 6,000 verses, out of which more than 1,000 verses speak about science. And I have given various details. The, the Quran speaks about biology, it speaks about physiology, it speaks about oceanology, it speaks about zoology, it speaks about embryology, about medicine, and all the details. This will surely prove to you that this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And including, there are many predictions. There are many falsification tests. I request you to watch 
my video and since you are a subscriber on the Alidaya platform you can very well go to the video on demand section and type is the Quran God's word and you can watch that tape and inshallah inshallah you'll be convinced and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you hidayah so that you accept Islam and inshallah pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that after you give you hidayah that he shall put you in Jannah the Firdaus inshallah. Jazakallah shakran.